Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the last problem of today's biweekly contest. Divide an array into subarrays with minimum cost 2. The problem is a two pointers problem, and just like with any other two pointer problem, if you don't proceed towards a two pointer approach, more often than not, you will end up applying a range query data structure, something like segment tree of n victory. So in this video, we will be discussing both the approaches, the two pointers piece and why two pointers are applicable or how to understand the two point that you can apply two pointers here. And then we will also discuss the segmentary version without two pointers. All the timestamps will be there in the description down below. So if you are interested in just a specific solution, feel free to move to that part. But I would encourage you to watch the entire video so that you can understand the different approaches to solve this problem. So with that, let's get started. The problem states that you are given a zero indexed array of integers num of length n and two positive integers k and dist. Now the cost of an array is defined as the value of its first element. For example, the cost of 1, 2, 3 is 1 and cost of 3, 4, 1 is 3. Now you need to divide nums into k disjoint continuous subarrays such that the difference between the starting index of the second subarray and the starting index of the kth subarray should be less than equals to dist. So for example, if uh, your subarray first subarray is 0 to i1 minus 1, second subarray is i1 to i2 minus 1 third subarray is i2 to i3 minus 1 and so on and so forth up till ik minus 1 to n minus 1. So the condition is ik minus 1 minus i1 should be less than equals to dist. If this condition is satisfied then only the given partition is a valid partition. So among all the valid partitions you have to return the one which have the minimum possible sum of the cost of these subarrays. So let's take an example. Let's say the array is 1, 1, 3, 2, 6, 4, 2. k is 3, dist is 3. It means you have to divide it into 3 partitions and the partition will be valid if the difference of indexes between the second and the third partition because why third? Because third is the last partition. So the difference between the second and third partition starting index should be less than equals to 3. So one of the valid partition is 1, 3, 2, sorry, 1, 3, 2, 6, 4, and 2. So in this case, you can see the second, the starting index of the second array, which is i1, is 2, 0, 1, 2, right? And the starting index of the last subarray is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 minus 2 is less than equals to 3. And hence this partition is a valid partition. Now what will be the cost of this partition? It will simply be the cost of each of these subarray and you add them up. So cost of this subarray is 1 because it is the first element. Cost of this subarray is simply 2 and cost of this subarray is 2. 2 plus 2 plus 1, 5. So the cost of this partition is 5. Similarly, there are other valid partition. For example, 1, 3, 2, 6 and 4, 2. This is again a valid partition. So among all other valid partition, if you figure out the cost of all those partition, you will not be able to get a cost of less than 5. And hence the answer here is 5. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now how to solve this? So one of the very brute solution would be try out every partition, understand whether it is valid or not. If it is valid, just uh, find out its sum and take the minimum across all of them. That solution surely will not pass because the complexity of that solution would be some NCR format, right? Because it's kind of a stars and bars problem. You have some stars and you have some bar. You have to divide stars into some bars. So it will be of the order NCR, which will surely not pass because N is 10 power 5, right? So 
what we have to do is some optimization right so let's start with the first array first array will always start from index 0 no matter what right because we have to divide the array into contiguous subarrays so we know first array will always start at index 0 and similarly last array will always end at index 9 that is the two point we know about so in this case let's say we have to partition it into four partition so what will happen is you will have four different partitions right let's say something like this now once you have these partitions you have to find out the cost the cost would be the sum of first elements of these partitions right so sum of these four elements will be the cost now this element we already know about this will always be two no matter what right so nums of zero or array of zero is something which is always there you can't avoid it right now what you want is these three elements and their variable so let's call them i2 i3 and i4 so basically the starting index of the array we are calling at ij right so these are the three variables and we also need to ensure that i4 minus i2 is less than equals to 6 otherwise the partition will not be a valid partition so this is the condition we need to ensure so just like any other problem there is two variable so one of the approach could be let's just uh, fix one variable and iterate over the other one right so in this case what you can do you can say okay i will first find out i2 and once i have i2 i know what can be the possible values for i4 and based on that i will find out i3 as well right so let's uh, do that so we know i1 is this no doubt about this we want to find i2 so i2 can be anything starting at index 1 right so let's do it step by step let's say i2 is this you are trying out every possible i2 so first you will try out this i2 right then you will try out this i2 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 and so on and so forth so let's say you are trying out some i2 which in this case is this 6 so once you know the value of i2 so you have, you have fixed i2 right for now i2 is 2 so once you know the value of i2 you can satisfy this equation by saying that i4 should be less than equals to 6 plus 2 which is 8 right so what does this mean this mean that the last array the last array can't start at here it can start at here it can start at here it can start at here and so on and so forth but it will never start at here if it starts at here this will not be a valid partition as per the given constraint so that's what uh, this condition now care uh, now tells us so we know i3 and i4 will be in this range one of these uh, six indexes will be i3 and after that we will have i4 now what do you want you want to minimize the total cost you know i1 you know i2 what you don't know is i3 and i4 but you know where they lie and you want to minimize the cost so what is the approach or uh, what is the obvious approach obvious approach would be just find out two elements with the least value and that we will make it i3 and i4 so in this case you will say okay um, i will find out these two elements which have the smallest value so i will just make this i3 and this will be my i4 and because we have already taken care of this condition we don't need to worry about the validity of this particular partition this partition will always be valid in other words this will be my first partition this will be my second partition this is the third partition 
and this is the fourth partition and it will be valid because the conditions we have already taken care of so that's basically the approach the approach is you will try out every possible i2 once you have fixed i2 you know where all the next elements should lie and once you have that range you can simply figure out what is the k minus or just select k minus 2 elements in that particular range right so let's say if k was 6 right you would have selected 4 elements in this array and such that the sum is minimum possible in other words you will, you will select 4 smaller elements so 3 4 and then you will select 5 and then you will select 6 you will say i3 is this i4 is this i5 is this and i6 is this right so that's basically the approach so the pseudo code for that would look something like this right so you will try out all possible values of i1 or you can call it i2 or whatever you want you will just find out every pos try out every possible values of i2 and uh, once you have fixed i2 you will not you will know what will be the max value of ik and once you know the max value of ik you know you have to select k minus 2 minimum elements in this particular range and these are the two arrays that are the cost the cost of the first two arrays that you have already fixed so this will be your total cost when i1 or i2 whatever you call is this particular index and similarly you will try out every other possible i1 and for each of them you will find out the best possible cost and you will take minimum across all of them to get the answer right so hope the approach is clear now what will be the time complexity first of all we are iterating over all the all possible i1 which in worst case can be n right after that we are finding out some minimum k minus 2 elements in a particular range now this range in worst case can be of order n and given an array you have to find out k minus 2 smallest element so what will be the approach or the obvious approach is sort the array and select the first k minus 2 so if array is of size n sorting the array would require n log n time and then selecting the k elements would require n plus k time overall so the complexity is n log n plus k if the array of array size is n which in this case is true this array size can go all the way up to n in worst case so the complexity is this so inside uh, for each i1 you are, are doing these many operations so in total there are n possible i1s so this is your overall time complexity n square log n or plus n into k now this complexity will not pass as well because n and k both are of the order 10 power 5 but this is lot better than the previous one which was exponential or rather exponential in terms of n if you remember ncr was the total number of uh, partitions that you can have right in the in this particular form so this is lot better and in fact uh, there there were there was different problems as well uh, which uh, i think the first problem is very similar you can try this particular approach with the first problem and i assume it will pass so now we have to optimize this as well so again two parts to it one is you are iterating over all possible i2 and second what you are doing for each i2 obviously this part you will not be able to optimize easily because if you don't iterate over all the i2s you need to come up with a strategy such that you select the i2s which you care about which is a bit difficult so let's try to optimize this part so the goal is we have to find the sum of k smallest element in the range l to r now here comes the two pointer piece so if you don't understand 
the semantics of L and R here. You will under, you will try to solve this problem as a generic range query problem that given any L and R, I need to find the sum of the k smallest element, which is very hard problem. I would not say that hard, but uh, we have discussed that sometimes in the past as well, but a bit hard problem to solve if you say L and R can be anything. But in this particular case, L and R follow a very nice pattern. So if you look at what is the value of L and R here, it is i plus 1 comma max i k and if you I look at max i k it is i1 plus dist. So in other words, L and R is simply i1 plus 1 all the way up to i1 plus dist, right. So this is the value of L and R. Now let us say i1 u incremented i1 plus plus. So previously let us say i1 plus 1 is x, i1 plus d is y. Now you do i1 plus plus. Now what will be the range? The range will simply be x plus 1 comma y plus 1, right. So in other words what is happening is if in the previous iteration L was this and R was this, in the next iteration L will be this and R will be this. Now what is the magic here? The magic here is previously this was the range right and now this is the range and what is difference between these two range? Only one element, this element was removed and this element was added. Now if you are somehow able to add and remove elements efficiently and keep track of k smallest element. You do not need to apply any range query data structure and you will be able to solve the problem as well. So let us start with this approach first and after that we will be discussing the range actual range query way to solve this problem in general right. So we have to find out the sum of the k largest element in this range let us say and we know that uh, difference between L and R would uh, be 5 because D is 5. So if uh, this is 2 this will be R right. So let us say this is your first range right you take all the elements and you put it in a sorted manner. You can use set or map or anything you just use a sorted data structure. So in this case we have 6, 6, 4, 7, 3, 5. So you just keep adding them in a sorted data structure and keep maintaining only 3 of them. So for example you will start from here right you will say okay I will add 6 let us add 6 right now you will come here one more 6 let us add one more 6 fine you will come here 4 okay 4 let us add here 7 now once you add 7 here the size of this list is greater than k and you only want k elements or k smallest element. So just see which is the largest element and remove it. So <coughs> what you want is you want a data structure that can give you the largest element efficiently right that is the first requirement. Now we know 7 is largest so let us remove it and let us put it in a different sorted structure. Now why? Because it might be 7 is not the minimum right now because there is 6 right but when L will be incremented this 6 will be gone and in that case 7 might be useful again. So it is necessary to keep track of 7 as well right. So for now we will just put 7 in this different one and move forward. 3 comes. Let us add 3 here. 
now again the length becomes greater than k time to remove so we'll remove the smallest one let's say we'll remove seven uh, we remove six so we remove six from there and add it to the different structure sorted structure because this might again be useful now finally five so we'll add five time to remove because the size is greater than three which we which one you remove the smallest the largest one which is six so you remove this and put it in a different structure now once you have done this exercise you know this are the k smallest element and these are the rest of the elements right which you don't care about right now so once basically you don't need to now sort the array you already know the k smallest elements but you want the sum so while doing this entire exercise you can just maintain a sum array right and whenever you are adding an element in this data structure you will increment that and whenever you are removing it you will decrement that so this sum array would simply contain the sum of all the elements in this structure so now you have iterated over the array from l to r once and you get the total sum of the k smallest array so you iterated over everything between l and r so you iterated over these many elements you added and removed elements one by one so each operation will take log n time if you use set or any uh, sorted tree structure so these are the number of operations in which you are able to get the sum of k smallest element in this range now here comes the magic let's say l is now this and r is now this so whatever you had was valid for this particular range now the range has increased right so what will you do you will remove this element and add this element right let's first add because adding we know how to do so we'll just simply add here we'll say okay the size is greater than three so remove one and add it add the largest one here that we know so now we know that our data structure has these many elements into it now we need to remove this element how to remove so let's look at where this element exists does it exist here or it exists here so in this case 6 doesn't exist here so it means whatever elements are there in this particular piece are all in one of these positions it is not at position 2 so we will not touch this and we will simply remove 6 from here because if it is not there it is surely here we it should be there in one of these pieces right so we will simply remove 6 from here so in essence this is now our data structure for this particular l and r so what we have done we have look up or uh, first of all we have inserted something so insertion will take login time so one extra login right after that what we have done we looked up six in this we looked up six in this if it exists here we'll remove it if it does not exist here it will exist here and we remove it so in this particular case we are again doing login operation for the removed piece as well so in total we are doing login operation to just uh, figure out what is there in the next part or the next uh, sub array right now here 6 was not there in the first array but let's assume 6 was there for example let's say this was not uh, 5 and it was 6 right so in this case 6 will be there 6 will be there here right so this is this is your final state right now for this particular piece now 
you want to remove 6. So you'll see, okay, 6 is there here. Now, there can be multiple 6. So you don't, you don't know which 6 it belongs to. Either you keep maintain the indexes as well, but that is not necessary. So you can remove 6 from here because you assume that this is the first 6 that you encountered. So you just remove 6 from here. Now, once you remove 6 from here, you will remove 6 from this sum as well. I assume you are doing that already. Now, once you have this new array, you will see it still has a space for one more element. Now, this is all the elements that is left. So, which of these elements will you put here? The smallest one. You will just figure out the smallest one and put that smallest one element here. And it will again become a three element or this. It will again contain the smallest three element in the range L2R and sum will contain the sum for the same. Okay. So, hope you are, hope you understand what we are trying to do. We, because we know only one elements will change, we just devise a mechanism to add an element and to remove an element. To add an element, we just simply add it and remove the largest one if needed. To remove an element, we remove it, but we need to maintain k elements. So, we also maintain all the other elements with us so that if required, we can move elements from this set, this set, right. So, overall complexity is you are just moving elements from one set to another and you are doing it once for every index. So, in worst case, the complexity is 2 log n into n, right. So, the overall complexity is order n log n itself. So, in just order n log n time, you are able to figure out the value of min k of this range for all the ranges, not for a single range, it is amortized. So, for all the ranges, you are able to figure out this in just n log n time. Now, instead of n into n log n, the complexity is now n plus n log n, which will pass the given time constraint for sure, right. So, hope you understand what the problem solution is. If you have watched to this point, I would strongly, strongly encourage you to pause and try to code this entire thing by yourself because if you do not code this by yourself, you are not able to understand the pieces which you think you understand, but you still have some gaps with. So, hope you have at least tried it. Next, we will looking at the code and after that, we will discuss the actual range query solution for this problem. So, this, the solution is exactly straightforward. Uh, what we discussed, we maintain two sets, min k and rest of the elements. So, and also we maintain the sum of all the elements in min k as well as a separate piece. So, we iterate from 1 to n. Notice we have skipped 0 because 0 we know it will be always be considered and it will be a part of i1 or i0 whatever you call it the that particular array. So, we are starting or uh, we are finding out the starting index for i2. So, it will always start at index 1 or at some other or go anywhere to the right. So, we start from index 1, go all the way up to n. So, we simply insert the element into the min k and also incremented the sum because we have inserted it. Now, if the size becomes greater than k, then we will remove the largest one because we only want the minimum, the k smallest element. So, if the size is greater than k, we will take the last one which will be the largest one, we will remove it from the sum and from min k and we will add back it, add it to the rest set because it will be now considered as rest of the array. So, we will just simply add it in the rest of the array. Now, here I have maintained indexes as well, but as mentioned, you do not need to maintain indexes because even if you do not maintain indexes, it is fine. From the rest of the array, you can, you will be transferring the exact same element. So, 
we don't need to maintain this as a pair we can simply keep it int as well and that will also pass so from this part we know we have considered everything in the range l to r plus 1 now if it is a valid l and r so notice we are going from all the way from 1 to n let's say i2 is this so if i2 is this there is no place for i3 and i4 right so that's what we are checking we are checking if i minus dist is greater than 0 it means we have enough elements that we want right so we will if this is the case we will have uh, all the key elements with us so we will simply do answer is equals to min of answer comma sum because sum will contain the sum of minimum key elements now if that is the case we will now remove the previous lth element so if you remember we have everything from l to r plus 1 because we are keep we are adding everything as and when we are getting to it so now we have everything from l to r plus 1 so for the next range we have to remove this as well right so that's why we figured out what we need to remove and we see if it is present in the min k set or the rest of the set so if it is present in the min k set we will erase it from the min k set and simultaneously decrease the sum as well now once we have done this min k set has one less element previously it has k element right but now it has one less element because it has one less element we will simply move one element from the rest of the array so we'll say if the rest is not empty move one element from here to min k and which one to move the smallest one so we just pick the first one which is the smallest one we'll insert it to the min k and simultaneously increase the sum and remove it from the rest of the array now if the element to remove is not in min k then obviously it is there in the rest of the array we'll simply erase it from the rest of the array it doesn't matter at all so after this entire loop ends this answer will contain the minimum cost overall without nums of 0 because nowhere we have considered nums of 0 so we will simply add nums of 0 as well at the end so hope this entire solution makes sense uh, if you have any doubts in any of the piece till now feel free to post them in the comment section below I would be happy to answer so next let us try to solve this problem in general not with the assumption that L and R is of particular or is follow, following a particular pattern so now L and R can be anything and we have to solve for that we have to answer that for any L and R in simply log n or log square n or something of that sort not in order n for sure right so this one was amortized n log n but now we want actual n log n or n square log n kind of solution right so how to do that or uh, notice d doesn't matter here because now we are not considering what l and r could be l and r could be anything right we just want k smallest element so how to solve this one of the way brute force manner brute force solution we have already discussed just uh, sort the array put, fix, uh, put pick the k smallest one but we can't always sort the array because sorting the array itself will take a lot of time so the solution starts from the fact that let's say instead of finding out the sum of k smallest element you have to just figure out kth smallest element when you have sorted the array kth smallest element when the array is sorted for example if this l2r array is sorted it will become 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 right so if k is 3 we will return 5 so we want kth smallest element in the sorted version and this problem we have discussed multiple times in this channel this can be solved using segment trees and various versions of segment tree one way could be 
to use persistent segment tree one way could be to use merge sort tree right so i will i assume that you have watched one of these videos if not you can watch this video it is very detailed and it will help you understand how to solve this problem completely how to find out kth largest element in a range l to r right now i will i assume that you have already watched it so let's just quick do a quick recap of how to find out kth largest element in a range let's say you build merge sort tree i'm explaining the merge sort tree part but uh, persistent segment tree part will be exactly similar you can just refer to the video so let's say k is 3 you want to find out the third largest element in the range 1 to 6 so what will you do you will simply query the segment tree just you and just like usual segment tree so you want to query in the range 1 to 6 is it overlapping or is it fully overlapping no is it partially overlapping yes so we'll go to the both we'll go both both the sides right now here it will come is it fully overlapping no partially overlapping yes so we have to go both the sides right we will come here let's say is it fully overlapping answer is no partially overlapping yes so we will go both the side is it fully overlapping no is it partially overlapping no it is not overlapping at all so basically we will not get anything from here so what this means is when the array is sorted this will this element will not contribute to the array which makes sense because it is not uh, present in the range 1 to 6 right now we'll come here so we get 0 from here now we'll come here okay uh, is this fully overlapping yes it's fully overlapping so this will be considered completely now this entire array will be considered now to figure out the kth largest element we will do a binary search over the kth largest element let's say we are now figuring out how many elements are there which are less than equals to x if we get that number of element less than equals to x is greater than k then we will not search in the right half at all we will only search in the left half because we know if number of element in greater than x is k or oh sorry less than x is k then what we are searching for is in the left half completely similarly if it is less than equals to k or number of element which are less than equals to x is less than equals to k then we know what we are searching for uh, let's say this so what we are searching for is in the right half so we can completely skip the left half and only search in the right half so that's how we'll do binary search so we are doing a binary search and let's say x is currently 4 so what we want to know how many elements are there which are less than equals to 4 so we'll come here we know this entire array is part of our final array and this array is sorted because this is the merge sort tree so everything is sorted so we'll simply do a binary search over here to figure out how many elements in this piece is greater than or is less than equals to 4 right so number of elements which is less than equals to 4 in this array is 0 so again this will return 0 now overall 0 plus 0 0 so this will again return 0 now we'll go right 2 comma 3 fully overlapping so again same question we ask how many elements are there which are less than equals to 4 in this part of the array do a binary search you will get 0 because no no of the none of the elements is greater than or less than equals to 4 so we'll turn 0 here and we finally return 0 from here as well in the same fashion you will go in the right side is it fully overlapping no partially overlapping yes so we'll go both the sides fully overlapping yes so these two elements will be considered we will do binary search number of elements which are less than equals to 4 is 1 so we will return 1 from here and in the same fashion you will get 1 from here as well if you go downwards so overall you will get 2 number of elements which are less than equals to 4 will be 2 in this particular range and uh, you can check that as well Num there are only 2 elements which are less than equals to 4 right so because 2 is less than 3 it means what we are searching for is greater than 4 we want kth largest element so 4 is just the second largest element 
So what we are searching for is greater than four. So we'll search in the right half, and come and again we'll come up with some more x dash. We'll do the entire thing again and figure out the for, uh, process. So what is the overall time complexity of this entire algorithm? The overall complexity of this entire algorithm is uh, log cube n y. First of all, we are doing binary search. So for that binary search, we are doing uh, we'll need log n operation. Then for each by for each x, what we are doing, we are doing a range query data structure. So we will be visiting log n number of nodes in this tree. And once we have log visited log n number of node at each node, I am doing a binary search. So binary search will also require log n time. So we are doing log square n operation for a single x. And there will be log n x, so we'll be doing log cube n operation. So in log cube n, we are able to find out uh, the smallest, the number of elements which are less than equals to k. Right. Now, this entire thing you can do in log square n as well. Uh, how to do it? is a different question which i think we have already covered in the last video in the previous video that i have referred you can watch that but for now we'll be fine with this and we'll go forward right so notice now what we wanted we wanted sum of k smallest element we don't want the k smallest element in other words what we know about is that 5 is the kth smallest element that is i want every the sum of everything up till 5 that's what we know currently but we don't know the actual sum that's what we are interested in sum of kth smallest elements right so we want to find the sum as well the only thing that we need to change here is instead of maintaining only the sorted version let's maintain the prefix sum as well so we will simply maintain prefix sums at each level so at each level you will simply maintain prefix sum and this will look something like this so this is your new merge sort tree now you will apply the exact same thing this time instead of returning just one number from each node you will return two number first one will denote the count of element less than equals to x which was already there second one will denote sum of all those elements which are less than equals to x and how you will get that by simply doing uh, by simply referring to the prefix sum right so let's just take one final example let's say we are we wanted to find out the sum uh, number of element which are less than equals to 6 again in the range 1 to 7 or let's say 0 to 7 for simplicity um, let's 0 to 6 let's make it uh, 0 to 6 so we want to find out the number of sm sm number of elements which are smaller than equal to 6 in the range 0 to 6 and this time we want two things number of such elements and sum of all those elements as well right so let's start so we'll come here fully overlapping no partially overlapping yes so we'll go in both the sides right now we'll come here fully overlapping yes so this entire thing will be considered so we'll simply do a binary search over this array for x equals to 6 so we'll get this particular index in other words we'll see we'll say two elements are there which are smaller than equals to 6 now along with this we'll also return this because we know everything up till 6 has a sum of 8 so we'll also return 8 right in the same fashion we'll on the we'll go on the right side in the right side we'll again see fully overlapping no partially overlapping yes so we'll go both the side we'll come here again it is fully overlapping so we'll consider both number of elements less than equals to 6 we'll do a binary search we'll come to here we'll see okay one element are there. one element is there which are less than equals to 6 so we'll return 1 apart from 1 we'll also return 4 here because sum of all those elements will be 4 in the same fashion you will come here and do the same thing uh, it is not fully overlapping 
it is partially overlapping so we will go in both the direction from here you will get 0 comma 0 because it is not overlapping at all from here you will get 3 comma 3 right so in total you will return 3 plus 3 0 plus 3 plus 0 that is 3 comma 3 as well and finally from here you will return 1 plus 3 sorry it you will get 1 comma 3 from here number of element is 1 and sum is 3 so you will return 1 comma 3 from here and finally from here you will return 2 comma 7 right so number of elements is less than equals to 6 is 1 plus 1 2 sum of all those elements will be 4 plus 3 7 and finally this will return 2 plus 2 4 and 8 plus 7 15 so 4 comma 15 so number of element which is smaller than equal to 6 is 4 and sum of all those element will be 15 so when your binary search will end this value will give you the sum of least k elements right so the code for entire thing will be exactly what we have discussed in this video only change will be you will be building one new array right so i think uh, this was the code for uh, uh, no i think this was the code for the previous version which we have discussed in that video so we will simply modify this code so let's just uh, come here and uh, this is what i have written we have simply modified that exact same code merge function is exactly similar we haven't changed this function at all and what we have done is uh, change this build function and added these two lines we are just finding out prefix sums as well nothing else right after that the thing that we have changed is previously it was returning an integer now it is returning a pair and first part is the count second part is the sum so the neutralizing values is 0 comma 0 now if it is fully overlapping we were doing binary search this part is exactly similar now previously we were returning index now instead of only index we will also return prefix sum of index and finally this part is exactly the same just instead of returning a simple plus we will do sum of count and sum of sum as well and return that so nothing changed much in the segmentary class as we see and in the query part as well nothing will change this was the query part previously and this will remain the query part and uh, now we want the k minus 2th smallest element the only catch here or the gotcha here is you may get more than so let's say all the elements let's come here let's say all the elements are 2 right so there are 2 2 2, two all the way up to 100 times and you want you wanted to find out fifth smallest element now fifth smallest element will be 2 itself right so if you get the sum of all the elements which are less than equals to 2 you will be getting the sum of all the 100 elements but you don't want that so you know that after 5 as well everything else is 2 right so you can simply remove their contribution by subtracting 2 times the number of extra 2's right that's what we have done this was the sum we just removed the contribution which was extra so we only wanted k minus 2 elements and we know the last element will be repeated right so last element is l we removed whatever how many extra times it has repeated and simply this will denote the sum of all those k minus uh, or k minus 2 elements and we added nums of i1 because this is the value of the ith one right so overall this uh, the complexity of this entire solution is n log cube n which is passing most of the test cases just uh, i think last three test cases was not passing so you can simply convert into n log square n by using a small trick uh, of segmentary otherwise you can also use uh, personal segmentary which we have discussed here as well everything will be same you just need to instead of uh, count you also need to maintain the prefix sum and you will be done right 
so if you have watched this point i would encourage you to code this entire solution by yourself using mercer tree and person segment tree as well if you have watched both the videos already if you don't have if you haven't watched any of these must sort tree or percent segment tree i would encourage you to watch at least must sort tree because that is a very standard one which is helpful in many of the problems so make sure to watch it and then try this problem if you want so that's it for this video if you have any doubts in any of the pieces feel free to post them in the comment section below i would be able to answer if you like the video give thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one thank you